Dr. Jeremiah's book, his latest one. We're going through chapter 3 on page 60 of chapter 3. He goes to the prophecy in Ezekiel. The prophet Ezekiel predicted a coming war in which Russia and its coalition armies will try to destroy the nation of Israel. I believe this will ha uh, happen in the early days of the tribulation. It's the teaching of Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39 that a lot of these fundamental Protestant prophets want to say will take place before Jesus Christ returns. Jeremiah says it may be the beginning of the Great Tribulation. Friends, we will go through it in detail looking at it. They have it wrong. This is a prophecy for after Jesus Christ has returned. The very words in it prove that it's after the return of Jesus Christ. Now, these Protestant prophets will take certain verses of Ezekiel 38 and 39 and say that it's literal. Well, okay, so if parts of it are literal, how can you say some of it is literal and other parts are not? It doesn't make logical sense. And again, atheists would laugh at such ideas. Take one part literal and one part not, and one part fulfilled, another part not. Just kind of mix it up any way that you like according to your theology. Well, let's look. Ezekiel chapter 38, you will read about indeed the armies that come. And indeed, it's Russia and other armies of the East, the coalition of the Eastern powers. And you can read that, the first verses. They are prepared, verse 7, prepared for yourself, you, and all your company that are assembled with you, and be you on guard unto them. After many days you shall be visited. In the latter years you shall come into the land that is brought back from the sword. Now, in Bible prophecy, latter years can refer to the very end time, indeed, when Jesus returns, and the, and the years before he returns, and also sliding into the beginning of the thousand-year reign. That is all the latter years, because it's going to take a while for the kingdom of God, set up in Jerusalem by Jesus Christ, to form and shape, and eventually to rule the whole world. And this prophecy is indeed for some time after Jesus Christ has returned. Verse 8, after many days you shall be visited. In the latter years you shall come into the land that is brought back from the sword, is gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which have always been waste, but is now brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely in them. The people of Israel, I have told you on this YouTube, that Bible prophecy of the Old Testament tells you that when the Messiah returns, the house of Israel, the people of the house of Israel and the house of Judah are in captivity to their enemies. And the house of Israel, my friends, the house of Israel today are, are Sweden, Finland, Norway, Denmark, France, Holland, Belgium, the British Commonwealth, including Australia, New Zealand, the British Commonwealth, Canada, the Anglo-Saxon British Commonwealth, and the United States of America. You are the house of Israel in prophecy today. Believe it or not, and I know that most of you won't. Well, you'll find out who's right as we go along here. You'll find out that you are the people of Israel, the house of Israel, and the Jews are the house of Judah. They only comprise three tribes, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, and the house of Israel in their captivity by the Assyrians eventually migrated into Europe and across Europe and eventually became the nations that I've just mentioned. And at this time, 
when Christ returns, the house of Israel, the house of Judah are in captivity to their enemies. And Jesus delivers them out of that captivity, brings them into the Holy Land. Verse 9. You, this power from the north and the east, Russia and her allies, you shall ascend and come like a storm. You shall be like a cloud to cover the land. You and all your bands and many people with you. Thus says the Lord God, it shall also come to pass at the same time shall things come into your mind that you shall think an evil thought and you shall say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. Is the state of Israel today unwalled villages? Do they not have a huge wall around them to protect them? This power will say, I will go to them that are at rest. Is the state of Israel at rest today? Can you really think that they are at rest? That dwell safely? You think the state of Israel dwells safely today? No, they do not. All of them dwelling without walls. Well, they have a big wall that's around them right now. Is that wall going to come down when this prophecy is fulfilled? Well, that's what this verse says. They're not going to have any walls and having neither bars nor gates. Yes, it is a prophecy for the future, for when Jesus has returned, and the peoples, all of the peoples, all 12 tribes of Israel are dwelling like this in the Holy Land, unwalled villages, dwelling safely without walls and having no bars, no gates. And this power, verse 12, is to take a spoil. This is what they're thinking. And to take prey, to turn your hand unto the desolate place which are now inhabited and upon the people that are gathered out of the nations which have gotten cattle and goods and dwell in the midst of the land. It tells you about some of the people here. They're going to come. Verse 13, you are come to take a spoil. You're gathering with your company to take a prey, to carry away silver and gold, to take away cattle and goods, to take a great spoil. Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say unto Gog, thus says the Lord God, in the day when, when my people Israel dwell safely, do they dwell safely today? Will they dwell safely before Jesus returns? No, they will not. When my people of Israel dwell safely, you shall not know it. And you shall eat fat till you're fallen, drink blood till you're drunken of my sacrifice, which I sacrifice for you. Thus you shall be filled at my table with horses and chariots, with mighty men. This is again literal. If the first part is literal, so is this. There will be literal horses and some type of wagons with all men of war, says the Lord. And I will set my glory among the heathen, and all the heathen shall see my judgment that I have executed, and my hand that I have laid upon them. So the house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord their God from that day forward. We don't know it today. We have left our Lord God. We have turned our back upon him. We have thrown out his word. We no longer keep his commandments. Verse 23. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity, because they trespassed against me. Therefore I hid my face from them and gave them into the hand of their enemies, so they all fell by the sword. That is yet to happen, and it will happen upon our people and nations of Israel. According to their uncleanness and according to their transgressions have I done unto them, and I hid my face from them. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, now will I bring again their captivity of Jacob and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel, all 12 tribes, and I will be jealous for my holy name. And after that they have borne their shame and all their trespasses whereby they have trespassed against me, when they dwelt safely in their land and none will make them afraid. 
none, when indeed they have trespassed against the Lord. And now the Lord will deliver them and none will make them afraid. 27. When I brought them again from the people and gathered them out from their enemies' lands and am sanctified in them in the sight of many nations, then shall they know that I am the Lord God, which caused them to be led into captivity among the heathen. But I have gathered them out of their own land and have left none of them any more there. Neither will I hide my face any more from them, for I have poured out my spirit upon the house of Israel, says the Lord God. His spirit is poured out upon Israel now. That is the context of these verses. That God will deliver all of the house of Israel, all 12 tribes, he'll deliver them. It's a context, indeed, when the Messiah has come. God's Spirit is poured out upon them, and they are now dwelling safely. That is the context of these two chapters. But let's go back now and read about this power that is going to come down. You shall come, uh, chapter 38, 15, and you shall come from your place out of the north part, you and the many people with you, all of them riding upon horses in a great company. It's literal. They will be riding upon horses. And you shall come against my people Israel as a cloud over the land. Verse 17, thus says the Lord, you, you he of whom I have spoken in old times by my servants, the prophets of Israel, which prophesied in those days many years that I would bring you against the people of Israel. But it's going to be against them after Jesus has returned. And it shall come to pass when God shall come into the land of Israel, says the Lord, I will, my fury will come up in my face and in my jealousy and the fire of my wrath that I have spoken. Surely in the day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel. And you can go on. I will plead, verse 22, with pestilence and with blood. And I will rain upon him and upon his bands and upon the many people that are with him an overflowing rain and the great hailstones, fire and brimstone. Thus will I magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Therefore, verse or chapter 39, he will, they will come, this power, and I will, verse 3, I will, verse 2, I will turn them back. And I will smite the bow out of their left hand, and I will cause their arrows. That will be literal, my friends, bows and arrows. Because it will be after Jesus has returned, and the world has just about blown itself off the earth. And they shall fall upon the mountains of Israel. Verse 15. And you shall fall upon the men in the field, for I have spoken it, says the Lord. And I will send a fire on Magog, and among them that dwell in the isles and carelessly in the isles and they shall know that I am the Lord. Verse 9 and they, they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth and shall set on fire and burn the weapons. Now how do you burn missiles and tanks and airplanes if this is going to happen before Jesus returns? How are you going to burn those things? This is also literal. If one part is literal, the other part is literal. How are you going to burn modern armament? But when this prophecy takes its place, it won't be modern armament. It will be like cavemen coming out with bows and arrows and sticks and staves. The bows and the arrows and the hand staves and the spears, they shall burn them with fire seven years. How do you burn with fire modern machinery? It's silly. But when this takes place, it will not be modern machinery. It will be, indeed, literal bows and arrows and wooden spears. And it shall come to pass, verse 11, that in that day I will give Gog a place in the graves of Israel, a valley of the trespass of the sea of the sea, the east of the sea. Verse 19, seven months shall the house of Israel be burying them, that I may cleanse the land. 
burying them for seven months. This is people. It isn't armaments. It isn't missiles and tanks that the modern people will use if you're going to invade a nation. This is literally thousands upon thousands of literal people that will be slaughtered by the Lord. And Israel indeed will be cleansing the land of them. And it will take months. They shall get men out of the, verse 14, continual employment, passing through the land to bury with the passages and remains upon the face of the earth. And they shall be seven months doing this, burying the people. This is after the coming of Christ and not before. 